Welcome to the ENA Podcast with your host, Dan Campana. This is the ENA Podcast, and this is Dan Campana, the Director of Communications with the Emergency Nurses Association, welcoming you to our latest episode. And it's a celebratory episode in that we're talking about the one-year anniversary of the debut of the Emergency Nurse Residency Program, uh, which has uh, expanded across the country to more than three dozen uh, hospitals and EDs uh, who have taken on and implemented this program to really look at how to create a a good starting point for uh, new nurses and new to practice nurses coming into the ED to give them a holistic preparation on how and what to expect uh, once they get into the ED. So to help me do that are a few folks from Huntsville Hospital in Alabama, uh, Stacy Langford, the Director of Emergency Services, and then two of their clinical education specialists, Dallas Maples and Nathan White, talk a little bit about what their experience has been from, uh, from concept to execution and then now where they're at, uh, you know, several months uh, into the process of uh, using this and, and introducing it to their nurses. So Stacy, Dallas, Nathan, wait, welcome to the ENA podcast. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Stacy. let me let me start off with you uh, from your role. And uh, I understand you've been with the ED there for, for more than two decades. Um, let's talk a little bit about the concept of what the residency program offered and what kind of caught your ear and caught your attention in terms of maybe this is something you wanted to bring into your facility there. Sure. So just the importance of um, bridging the gap between a new grad nurse starting and coming into this environment is tough. And when first getting into this leadership position, that was always a dream is to have some form of a residency. Uh, We tried different avenues to make that happen um, through our own ER orientation process that's called ER 101. We've made a lot of changes to it. Um, We even tried a a trial of having similar to the cohort where there's one person that had the group and there just really wasn't the time to build a curriculum and modules and a plan for that and manage a department. Um, So um, our vice president heard about the, the webinar that was being presented by ENA and said, um, this may be what you're looking for. Um, And so we all three attended that and it it was spot on, that's exactly it. Was it a no brainer or is it still something to kind of go, well, we've tried a lot of things, we've seen a lot of things. It was a no brainer, they they captured everything. They had the plan week to week to week what the, the residents will do, they had the modules. They were broken down specifically, respiratory, cardiac, neuro. That's what we were wanting. Uh, we wanted some of that specific training with the, the same individual that could kind of monitor their growth and then branch off into learning how to manage one patient versus two versus three. Um, so they they hit everything from my standpoint that we were looking for. So Dallas, as an educator, uh, you see a lot, you deal with a lot. You know, there's a lot of opportunity to, to bring things in. What were some of your hopes uh, right off the bat about ways that could change things for the better, could create some efficiencies? You know, it could just create general improvement in how you're preparing nurses to come into this unpredictable environment. Yeah, I think one of the main things that us, along with probably many ERs, um, have been looking for over the past few years is just gaining that experience back um, into your department and increasing confidence. That's something that that we've seen from uh, all of our employees that went through the residency program is they hit the floor immediately, increased confidence. They're, they have built relationships throughout the program with our physicians, mid-levels, um, so they have a go-to um, to ask questions to versus being nervous and maybe maybe not want to ask that because they don't really want people to know that they don't know that, um, but they have more relationships now, so they're more open to ask questions, more confident um, whenever they're hitting the floor. Nathan, from your perspective, when you think about putting this into action and, you know, as Stacey alluded to, the structure was was handed to you, but it's still you're learning as you go, too, as well, on how to implement this. What were, what were some of the things that uh, stood out to you as you started to, to roll this out and put it into action from your role also as an educator? Absolutely. So one of the things is, and I think it, I think everybody in the ERs is seeing this, There's it's, it's high intensity all the time. And to have something that has a pretty solid format um, that is well versed, um, that also gives you the flexibility to work within what your current program structure is, works. Um, we are blessed here at such a large facility that we have a lot of the resources 
And um, that helps us that we can show them those pieces in implementation. Um, one of the things that we um, see with it is, is that a lot of ERs that are um, high acuity level ones is it's it's a lot of information to take in and it provides a structure of those core basics um, for them to really appreciate it. And when you have so many pieces of the puzzle, you're trying to teach them that you have something you can back up on that if there's a piece that falls through, maybe your well-versed um, person that is key knowledge piece is not able to, somebody gets sick, human elements happen. It's got a structure to it that we can back up on, that somebody can pick up that piece and get the core basics, that it's consistent with each cohort. Um, and that's really helpful because when you have um, so many new grads and new hires, it helps them to be consistent in the message that they're getting. So the training is consistent and the flexibility of that training to be able to tweak to um, what we do here is great, that it's not a set in stone, you have to do it this way, but this is the bare minimum recommend, recommendation. And these are the things that would help and make it to whatever our facility needs is been great, it's been beneficial. We can add those pieces into it. Um, so we love it for that perspective. So let me follow up on that for, for both uh, you and Dallas. Uh, what are some things that you sort of customized or you, you brought in that were unique to your facility that really, having the program's foundation to build off of, you said, well, this is how we can do this that matters most for us here at Huntsville. Yeah, so prime, prime example right off the bat, we're like, I don't know if we're gonna be able to work with the schedule and keep uh, the responsibilities that, that we need to keep up with. Um, so the residency program is built Monday through Friday. Um, however, what we did is we condensed the lecture days um, to Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Instead of a lecture day, you have two a day. You have one before lunch and one after. And then the simulations that go along with each lecture, we have just group those together and put them on Friday. Um, and then adding adding on to your question, our simulations uh, were able to um, tie them together with a local community college um, that allowed us to use their simulation room. And it is top of the line simulation. It's an immersive classroom we actually took pictures of 360 pictures of rooms in our department and threw them over there onto their campus. So all of our new hires that go through their simulations are actually in our ER room. Background noise of the ER, <laughs> smells that you can put in there like GI bleed, wow. DKA, all kinds of stuff. Um, so that has definitely increased um, learning. And then whenever they actually see these patients in their actual room, they've done this before. <laughs> so we've used some of their some of their very realistic mannequins and also real people in these simulations as well. I think there's a big thing when you talk about being able to tweak to to accommodate or to create something that is unique for your experience versus having to start from scratch. Uh, Stacy, you kind of alluded to that earlier. What are some of the other uh, positive realities that that you've seen? Maybe it's in some of the results of um, how people are hitting the floor or even from the, the program's perspective of being more holistic and looking at a nurse, not just clinically getting them prepared, but also looking at the other things about uh, what nurses start to experience from being exposed to trauma repeatedly, how to debrief after, you know, after some tough cases, things like that. I mean, the, the program is looking beyond just their clinical capabilities. What, what does that meant for you in terms of seeing a difference on the floor? For me, that's um, seeing how strong they are at week seven. Um, as Dallas said, they're not quite as timid as they would normally be with our traditional ER 101 orientation, more standing back in the room. Um, these residents, week seven, they're they're already jumping in. They're, um, our most recent, our resident recognized a heart block before the experienced nurses did, um, which was really, really nice. So that again, if they have that type of critical thinking and they have the confidence, our overall goal is we want to have retention to where they stay. That's for for every ED that wants that. Absolutely, retention and and you know seeing the investment in them through this. Uh, Nathan, as an educator, you've probably seen a number of nurses over the years. Um, are you seeing something different in their eyes because they realize they're a part of something that may not be you know it, it's becoming more common as the program has expanded around the country, but are they picking up on something that they're they're doing something a little bit different than maybe some of their peers who have gone to other places that don't have the program? Absolutely. Um, just when we get to watch them on the floor, when we're on the when we're doing our floor time, doing our rounds, they are 
um, they're not timid. Um, they have a chance. What the program really allows is it allows them a chance to reflect and really think questions through and have a chance to ask those questions. Um, so our um, traditional orientation is put them with the preceptor, get them on the floor, and it's on the fly training. And that doesn't necessarily give them a chance to ask questions in the moment. Whereas this, they can go through those pieces and ask them, especially as a new grad, okay, I've, I've passed the NCLEX now. Um, how do I make this applicable to my current job? How do I make this applicable to the ER? Because NCLEX is how to be a nurse. And now we've got to build them in how to be a great emergency department nurse. So watching them work, especially when you start seeing them go through the didactic portions and asking those questions about the different processes and what's important to the ER um, and uh, utilizing a different thought process than, okay, what's my task telling me to do, but really using the high rate model to um, process information and to get information to make decisions. Um, they are much more collected on the floor. Um, they're more confident in themselves earlier on. Um, we really see that um, in the week seven where they are able to pick different pieces of uh, the tasks and really focus on them and drill down on them. So then when they get into their first week uh, with their uh, preceptor on the floor, they're they're comfortable with the things that um, I wish I knew starting out, um, that it's okay to ask questions, that it's okay to forget, um, that asking questions is the smart choice. Um, where are my resources at before I hit the floor? They know where to find the information, such as where can I um, pull my medication histories from? Where can I pull my drug interactions from? And my Y sites, they know where that stuff is because they have a chance to do it. So they're not having to learn how to be a nurse and what are my resources. They're already pre-engaged with what are my resources. And now I'm on the floor. Now I can focus on how to be good, really good with the skills at the bedside instead of having to learn skills and concept. Um, and that's so great to see when they get to the end of that orientation piece, they get to the um, their 18 week and they're handling these three beds and they're confident and to see that confidence in it. And I think that helps them with the resiliency. They, they know they have that team aspect built in and um, they are, they're an independent seeing the first cohort that we have because they're hitting close to that one year mark now. And they are just as confident as some of our experienced three, four year nurses that we have that um, they um, they take the flow and they bounce back so well, even with our really critical patients. That's a good segue, Dallas. Let me ask you, what have you seen in terms of how this has impacted those more experienced nurses? Uh, is it giving them a different level of confidence as well that they've got maybe a better uh uh, the bench is a little deeper, a little sooner in who else is coming into the ED. Um, you know, I, I think that's something that we haven't talked a ton about overall with the program is what this does for everybody else as these folks are coming through the program. But what, what have you seen from the, the rest of the staff as these people are starting to, these cohorts are ending and people are coming into the, pro, into the ED with that level of confidence that everybody's been talking about here? Yeah, so the experienced staff want the residency program. <laughs> <laughs> they want to go through it. Um, they they love the concept, they love the idea, they love the help that they get whenever these residents come off the floor and they're able to help. Um, so yeah, the bench is a little deeper with these people. As soon as they uh, come off orientation, it feels like you're dealing with a, a six month experienced nurse already, in, in all honesty. Stacy, I'll start with you. Just looking uh, for some some takeaways as we wrap up here. Um, you know, from your experience and certainly your time that you've spent at the hospital there and working with your educators, um, you know, what are some key things that when you talk to your peers elsewhere, you know, or, you know, just even around the hospital, what are some of the things that you, you highlight as takeaways of what you've seen now a year into something that started as concept that really was attractive, but now you're seeing it in action and the benefits it's making as it was just alluded to, to the entire staff in the ED? Yes, that they are definitely stronger critically thinking and the confidence that they have. We had um, one resident that found out they weren't really fit for the ED after they had gone through the residency and so worked with another leader here in the organization and um, said when she got that resident, she's like, wow, she is so strong. I'm like, we we know that. She just 
didn't believe as strong as she was because, you know, just looking at people around you, sometimes that can be a little bit intimidating, thinking you should be further along sure. than where they are. But they they have um, the leaders have also bought in because um, we we job shadow. So our residents go to other departments and spend time. And um, one unit has partnered with us so far to send their nurses here to partner with ours. So getting that um, buy-in from them as well and hopefully making nursing as a whole more collaborative, especially during those handoff reports that we do ED to inpatient is, is key um, for this program. So just to wrap up here, uh, you know, Nathan and, and Dallas, um, when you talk to other educators, you know, what are you telling them when you say, this is what we're implementing, this is what we're working with right now? What what are you telling them and what or what questions are you hearing from them that ultimately come back around to maybe you should check out this program too because we've seen the positive yeah um the other educators uh like the program they like the idea that we shadow different areas and like like stacy mentioned uh, they're like hey we'll try it so then we'll take their nurses down here and they come to the ed whenever i send the residents up um, so that's something neat uh, um, as far as dealing with other er educators very interested in the program um, local or hospitals within our organization have actually uh, came to our simulation days to watch us just to see how we do it. Um, so growing interest upon um, emergency room educators and really educators uh, as a whole in, in our hospital. Nathan, I'll give you the final word. What, what's, what's your final takeaway that you'd want to share about your experience in, with the program? Um, it's it's uh, from an, from a bedside nurse perspective, it's what I wish I had had starting out that I had that confidence builder to focus me in on what I needed to not build this as just a job, but to build on that career um, from a um, educator perspective, the amount of support that you get with this program is genuinely the best support, um, both from how we can resource in um, other educators that are in the program, how we can directly link in with ENA with questions that we've had from that piece, um, and seeing from the educator side how our newer nurses are blossoming into true career emergency department nurses that are now a year in, they're ready to build in and start precepting these new nurses that are graduating in uh, May, June. And we have the confidence that they're getting that. And it's making it, it's making it, the whole process just kind of clicks so well. It's so seamless um, that you don't have to, don't have to necessarily think through every little step because it's been so vetted. I mean, it's been so well built um, all the way around. I couldn't say any more from the ENA perspective that you guys have really filled in a lot of um, the blanks that may be out there for people who have heard about it but haven't you know, been a part of it and to have gone through the cycle that you have uh, so far and to see the results in that patient care side of it. I mean, ultimately, that's what this all boils down to is doing the best you know, for every patient that comes through uh, your ED. So, uh, Stacy, Nathan, Dallas, I appreciate you being a part of the ENA podcast today. Thank you very much. Thank Thanks you. for having us. As we wrap up this episode of the ENA podcast, I'll, I'll just point out that you can go to ena.org slash ENRP to learn um, you know, everything you would wanna learn about the program. And certainly there's ways that you can contact ENA to uh, get a little bit more details and, and talk to some of the folks who are uh, instrumental on the ENA side in making this work. And a lot of those people who are instrumental on our side are also some of the folks that, uh, that Nathan alluded to uh, in terms of the support once you're in the program to make sure that uh, it, it, it's not just to hand it off and do what you want to with it. There's a lot of things that go into uh, making this program uh, the success it's been so far. So uh, I appreciate the time from our folks in Huntsville today and appreciate everyone for listening and hope that you'll join us next time on the ENA podcast. To learn more about ENA or to become a member, visit ena.org backslash membership.